Economy and Innovation, Associate Minister of Rural Economic Development, Nate Horner, as well as Damien from IATSE Local 212, Tina from ACTRA, and Brock from Keep Alberta Rolling here at Rocky Mountain Studios in my riding in Calgary Pagan. We've got a very exciting announcement today, and with that, I will turn it over to Premier Kenny. Thanks very much, Tanya, and uh, thanks to everybody for joining us. Uh, good to see you, Jay, uh, joining us virtually from uh, Los Angeles uh, for a very exciting announcement. I'm here today with uh, Ministers uh, Schweitzer, Horner, and uh, Fur. Uh, in addition to representatives of Alberta's booming film industry to announce an exciting, record-setting production filming right here in Alberta. It is perhaps the best example of the record year that the film industry is having thanks to Alberta's recovery plan. But before I get into that, I want to acknowledge the state-of-the-art facility that's hosting us here today. It's my second time here in a couple of weeks, actually. The brand new Rocky Mountain Studios, which opened earlier this year, with hundreds of thousands of square feet of studio space that's helping secure Alberta's place as a premier destination for film production. Earlier this month, Alberta was the only Canadian destination to be named among the top 50 movie destinations of the world. And it's easy to see why. Alberta's natural landscape is unrivaled. From rolling foothills to endless prairies, to thick woodlands, to majestic mountain landscapes and vistas, Alberta offers a canvas on which great and beautiful stories can be told. Along with our stunning natural beauty, we've got world-class big cities and lively, charming, smaller communities right across the province, offering filmmakers a big range of production opportunities. As part of Alberta's recovery plan, we're making the most of these major competitive advantages in order to further diversify our economy and create jobs. First, we implemented our platform commitment to create a film and television tax credit. We also eliminated the per production cap on film projects. Previously, productions uh, had, uh, had to be $10 million or less to qualify for the uh, previous grant, but now productions of every size and scale can qualify and that has helped to land some major projects that are game changers for film and television in this province. We wanted to send a message to the HBOs, the Disneys, Universals, and MGMs of the world that Alberta is open for business and keen to land their productions, and that we are going big. Because of these changes, Al Alberta's film industry is having a truly breakthrough year. Just this week, fans were introduced to the trailer for Ghostbusters Afterlife, filmed just a few hours away in uh, Nate's neck of the woods in Drumheller, and they told me when I was visiting there that uh, they had 90% hotel occupancy, thanks in part to that production. In June, MGM started filming their new series called Billy the Kid in Calgary and around the province, as well as in Drum. In May, the fifth film installment of the Predator series, under the working title Skills, also began filming in Alberta. A reboot of Jim Henson's Fraggle Rock is shooting at the Calgary Film Centre. CBS chose Calgary to shoot its new series, Guilty Party, starring Kate Beckinsale. And Paramount has also come to town to film Joe Pickett, a series based on the best-selling novels by C.J. Box. These large-scale productions from some of the entertainment industry's most prestigious studios have been a huge boost to Alberta's economic recovery. But none, none more so than HBO's The Last of Us, a brand new, highly anticipated series based on a massively popular video game of the same name. The Last of Us will be the single largest television series production in Canadian history, and it's happening right now in our own backyard. When I met uh, Jay Rowey, who's joining us here, HBO's uh, Senior Vice President for Production this past January, uh, to try to persuade HBO to choose Alberta, he told me that he'd been blown away by the welcome that he and HBO received here and that it frankly reminded him of the welcome he got in Northern Ireland when scouting for game, a small production called Game of Thrones about a decade ago. And uh, The Last of Us is now being called by many in the industry the next Game of Thrones in terms of its scale, budget and ambition. This is obviously great news for Alberta and you'll be able to hear directly from HBO in a second that without the steps we've taken as part of the recovery plan, 
they would not have been able to bring this epic, epic production to Alberta. All told, since uh, Alberta launched the film and television tax credit in 2020, we've welcomed 50 new productions to Alberta, creating 9,000 jobs and bringing uh, nearly a billion dollars in new investment to the province, 955 million to be precise. This is a true Alberta success story, a billion dollar industry springing up around us right in front of our eyes. These productions are filling hotel rooms all over Alberta with workers uh, who are patronizing restaurants and other services. They're hiring carpenters and caterers. They're creating jobs for lighting and tech crews. They're driving both economic diversification and growth at a time when we desperately need it. Thanks to productions like HBO's, our province has taken its place among major hubs like Vancouver and Toronto. We're seeing a highly talented workforce emerging to provide services to film series and uh, to, to film series and movies. And this is an important part because I want to acknowledge SAIT and other post-secondary institutions stepping up uh, their programs to train people for the trades uh, that will lead to great careers in this industry. We want to launch, uh, pardon me, when we launched Alberta's recovery plan last June, we did so with a key focus on getting Albertans back to work, not just today, but as in a stronger, diversified economy for generations to come. Major studios like HBO and Disney and even Apple have all seen what we can offer and have chosen Alberta as a destination for big budget productions. I know I speak for uh, Albertans when I say I can't wait to see uh, what the HBO team puts together here with The Last of Us. People are excited about it, not just to see this amazing story brought to life outside of the compelling video game series, but to showcase our province at the same time. So we're so happy that you're here and can't wait to see what you do next. And with that, I'll turn it over to Minister Schweitzer. Thank you so much, Premier, and thank you to everyone for being here today. When we started having this conversation about how could we expand out the film industry and take it to that next level last fall, we, re we went out and reached out to the HBO, Netflix, Disney, MGM, and sought their advice saying, look, how, we know you're big in British Columbia. We know you got a big global hub in Vancouver. You have a big global hub as well in Toronto. We wanna build that here in Alberta. And the true feedback that we had was, you know, make sure that you fix the film and television tax credit, make sure that it's competitive with industry so we can attract larger productions and television series here to the province of Alberta. That was the advice that we received from industry. And you know what? They've stepped to the, up to the plate and they have delivered for Albertans. And now here we are today with the largest television series in Alberta's history and Canada's history happening right now on the ground here in our province. A production that's of scale and size, as the Premier already mentioned around Game of Thrones, that next level of a production from HBO creating thousands of jobs right now in our province. This, this new series is going to touch directly over 10,000 Albertans as extras, as part of the scenery, small businesses that are involved, people that are building sets, wiring, situ you know, wiring the various sets across Alberta. And this isn't just about you know, big film studios here in the city of Calgary that we have right here today, but it's touching communities from Olds, Didsbury, Drumheller, Fort McLeod, High River. All of these different communities are experiencing the film and television industry which is leading to diversification of Alberta's economy today and for the future of our province as well. When you talk to young Albertans wanting to make sure that they have a future here for themselves for the next decades to come, they want to know that projects like this are happening here in Alberta. And it's exciting to see that our recovery plan is working now here today with the Premier's leadership and our team's leadership to get this done for Albertans, to create those jobs of now and for the tomorrow as well here in Alberta. It's encouraging to see this happen. And just to put this in scale and put this into context, before we had one city-owned facility, the Calgary Film Centre that we had here in, in Alberta, now we have over 400,000 square feet of film studio space with thousands, hundreds of thousands of more film studio space planned and to be developed as well here in Alberta. This is true diversification for our province. It's encouraging, it's creating thousands of jobs. And for those Albertans that were in the film industry that left Alberta, went to places like Vancouver, come on home. We'd love to have you come on home back to Alberta and work in the film and television industry. You have a long-term prospect in the industry here in Alberta. We need people to train that next generation of young Albertans that want to be in this industry. We want you to help train that next generation so we can have thousands of jobs for generations to come. Thank you so much. And I'm going to turn it over now to Minister Horner.
Thank you, Minister Schweitzer. As the Associate Minister of Rural Economic Development, I have the great honour of sharing the amazing work happening in rural communities throughout the province. And there are so many things we can be proud of. Just the other day, I was touring a brand new greenhouse, which, when completed, will be the largest one in Canada and will provide Alberta families with high quality, locally grown food. We also have private industry working with our government to expand access to internet, creating new opportunities and economic growth for rural communities. Which leads me to why we are all here today. The rapid expansion of the film industry in Alberta is directly impacting rural communities throughout the province and is another thing we should all be very proud of. Recently, Alberta was named one of the top 50 most beautiful movie locations in the world and is the only Canadian province to make that list. With our stunning mountains, far-stretching farmers' fields, and history-filled small towns, it's no wonder we made the list. And this is just one of the many reasons that our province is becoming a hotspot for major productions. When combined with our film and television tax credit, Alberta's film industry is on the path to success. We've already seen huge productions, like HBO's The Last of Us, choosing Alberta as the home for their projects. One of the best things about projects like these is that they're hiring Albertans and supporting local businesses in the trades, services, and hospitality industries. And I can tell you, I, I know some of these people and they've been unemployed or underemployed for some time and they're so very grateful and excited for this new opportunity. Today's update on the film and television tax credit represents a huge opportunity for our province and shows that our plan is working. Alberta's rural communities, with their get her done attitude, are prepared to meet the growing demand to film across our province. Albertans are welcoming, innovative, and have an unmatched work ethic, which makes our province the best place in the world to both live and do business. In saying that, I'm confident that today's announcement is just the start and that high-profile projects will continue to choose our province, and it's important that they do. Alberta's economic recovery needs to be felt in every corner of our province, and industries like this are how we'll get it done. The film industry is a driving force in Alberta's economic recovery, and I look forward to seeing the industry grow and the positive impacts it will have on communities across rural Alberta. I would now like to direct your attention to the screen for a video greeting from Jay Roy with HBO. From breathtaking landscapes to a growing and skilled workforce, Alberta has a lot to offer the global production community. Today, all of us at HBO and the cast and crew of The Last of Us want to personally thank Premier Kinney and Minister Schweitzer for the new enhanced film and television tax credit in Alberta. Without their vision, leadership, and stewardship, we would not have been able to bring this epic new series from HBO to Alberta. We look forward to working together to make this a wonderful worldwide success for all of us. Thank you. Thank you, Minister Horner, and thank you, Jay Rowey. With that, I'd like to invite Damien Petty, President of IATSE, to the podium. Thank you. Um, today's announcement is a success story indeed. Alberta's film and television tax credit is a game changer in terms of production volumes. It has created thousands of well-paying jobs and numerous business opportunities. High-profile projects such as The Last of Us are a major driver of jobs, Alberta businesses, and training programs. Projects like this benefit numerous in industries ra ranging from fabric suppliers to the hospitality industry. I can tell you firsthand that students from University of Lethbridge, Red Deer College, SAIT, Olds College, University of Calgary, are getting well-paying careers in this industry. I expect that trend to grow. Alberta's spectacular landscapes are being shared globally, elevating our economic standing in the global marketplace. Alberta is the star of these productions, and that will drive commerce in our province. Thank you. Thanks, Damien. And next, I'd like to invite up Brock Scredding with Keep Alberta Rolling. Yeah, when, uh, when I think of HBO, I think of quality. And uh, um, The Last of Us has long been toted as one of the most cinematic video game series ever created. So that's a perfect marriage with Alberta's cinematic landscapes, um, our, our light and our picturesque small towns. Uh, so 
Uh, we're just very grateful to have this production uh, in, the, in the province, developing the industry, hiring thousands of Albertans and putting them to work, and uh, using that as a, as a great way to market communities throughout Alberta, uh, like the ones mentioned by the minister. So thank you. Uh, we're very excited about the Alberta Film and Television Tax Credit. Thank you. Thank you, Brock. And finally, I'd like to invite up Mike Dumphy from Teamsters Local 362. The uh, changes to the Alberta Film Tax Credit uh, can only be seen as a success story. Not only are we creating good paying, high quality jobs, but we're also boosting the economy when we need it the most. No matter what the business is, gas station, lumber yard, coffee shop, movie money is being spent here in Alberta. Thank you. Thanks so much, Mike. Uh, and with that, we'll turn it over to the media for question and answers. Perfect. So if there's any questions in the room, there's just a media mic just behind the cameras here. And uh, not seeing anyone there, we will go to the phones first. Operator, can you please put through our first caller? This question is Lisa Cabella with Post Media. Go ahead, Lisa. Oh, thanks. Uh, good afternoon, Premier. Uh, this doesn't. This question isn't about um, the the film credits, but I will have one after this. So, um, the first question has to do with um, there seems to be a lot of anger and concern directed towards your government regarding the recent announcement by uh, Dr. Dina Hinshaw regarding the loosening of most COVID nineteen restrictions. And so, I'm just wondering, you know. Um, uh, do you understand that concern, and was this a direction that you asked Dr. Hinshaw to pursue? Uh, the answer is yes, I understand the concern, and uh, no, it's not a direction I asked her to pursue. Um, obviously, there's been a lot of emotion in the COVID debate uh, from the beginning, and that's entirely understandable. Uh, people are understandably, have been understandably anxious about uh, both uh, the disease itself and the damaging effect of restrictions. Um, with respect to the announcement made by Dr. Hinshaw last week, this is something that she and her team and the public health branch of the Department of Health, uh, all of them uh, uh, professional uh, members of the Permanent Public Service, uh, developed over some time, uh, presented it to our COVID Cabinet Committee, I believe on July the 8th, uh, and uh, we accepted without modification uh, the proposal that came forward from the Chief Medical Officer of Health. Uh, which is based on science and data, uh, particularly on the powerful science and data behind the protective effect of the vaccines, which has, as she says, dramatically changed the context of COVID-19. Um, so to quote Dr. Hinshaw herself, she said, quote, uh, I care deeply about the health of all Albertans. This means I have to constantly consider not just COVID-19, but all of the other threats to people's health the majority of our public health resources have been directed to the COVID-19 response, as has been necessary. Uh, that has come at the cost of not fully working on other threats, like, for example, opioid deaths. As vaccine coverage has changed the nature of the province-wide risk of COVID-19, it is, in my opinion, uh, time to shift from province-wide extraordinary measures uh, to more targeted and local measures. Uh, this allows us to start looking at other issues while still continuing COVID-19 protective measures. So again, uh, this was a package of measures that came forward from the Chief Medical Officer and her team. Uh, we respect their uh, data-driven uh, scientific advice, uh, and that's why we accepted the advice. Alicia? Do you Hello? Hi, we can hear you, Alicia, yeah. Yeah, okay. So my next question um, is actually to question, you know, HBO and Disney, these are multi-billion dollar industries. I'm wondering why tax credits are so important to draw them um, if, like, shouldn't our uh, lower dollar right. and um, beautiful scenery be enough? Why do they need the tax credit? Well, fair question, and uh, those are questions that uh, I and other ministers asked when we uh, were reviewing this policy, um, because we have so many natural advantages here. Obviously, our, our scenery, um, our highly trained workforce, 
our, our, our low tax rates and all of it together. Uh, but uh, we were punching below our weight when it comes to this uh, growing industry, partly because we were competing with other jurisdictions that have very strong built-in incentives, uh, very generous tax credits and other uh, incentives. Uh, in the Canadian context, we were competing specifically with Vancouver and Toronto or Ontario and BC uh, that have had much more generous incentives than Alberta for a long time. Uh, and in a continental context, we were competing with states like Georgia. In fact, I remember sitting down with Jay Rowey, who you just heard from, uh, from HBO back in uh, January, and he walked me through the kind of very careful math uh, and financial analysis they do in choosing a location. Uh, and uh, said that with the changes that we had made, we were now, uh, I think he said, a couple of points ahead of Georgia, which was a big deal because Georgia has been the big magnet for large-scale productions in North America in recent years. So, um, look, the general philosophy of our government, and I believe most Albertans, is, uh, is to have the right overall economic conditions to attract new job-creating investment, but we do acknowledge that in certain industries, and film and television are one of them, uh, you, you've got to uh, at least meet uh, your competition. And that's what we've done. Uh, so what's happened here, actually I think our incentives are still not as strong as other provinces and states, but, but the, the tax credit now allows us to compete with all of the other big advantages that you've talked about. Uh, at least you like our, our scenery, our, uh, our workforce, and, uh, and the good economic conditions. Operator, can you please put through our next caller? Next is Emily Mertz of Global News. Go ahead, Emily. Thank you so much for taking the question. Um, so the province has explained the need to spread health resources around to demands that are not COVID-related. I'm just trying to understand the decision to remove the mandatory isolation of COVID-positive individuals from a resource perspective. So did that part of the COVID response require a lot of staff or resources? Can you explain what's behind the decision to move from mandatory isolation of positive cases to a recommended? Sure, thanks for the question. Uh, first of all, with respect to resources, I want to be clear. The, this government has uh, spared no expense in defending Alberta's health, uh, Albertans' health throughout the COVID crisis. In fact, uh, last year we spent uh, $1.5 billion on top of the $20 billion health budget just for COVID-related health care. And we've added another $1.25 billion uh, for our COVID health contingency in this year's budget. So uh, that's uh, $2.75 billion, approaching $3 billion of COVID-related health spending alone. And if additional spending was necessary, we would be there to provide, uh, provide the, that money. There's no doubt about that. So it's never been a question of financial resources. Um, what Dr. Hinshaw articulated in her announcement last week was the need for uh, our public health infrastructure uh, to deal with, with more than just one disease. Uh, there are many challenges uh, to health. She's expecting, as she said, a significant uh, uh, season of, of influenza, of flu and cold. Uh, needs to be able to deal with that as well as uh, the uh, obviously the opioid crisis that took over a thousand lives in Alberta last year. Um, in particular, I, I think Dr. Hinshaw is concerned that uh, anybody who uh, who might have uh, minor symptoms of, of cold or flu, uh, if all of them are automatically put on two weeks of, of self-isolation, uh, that can be very disruptive. Um, and so she's taking, uh, and, and also I think she's pointed out that there was uh, essentially no enforcement of that particular legal requirement. But there remains a very strong recommendation for anybody uh, who is symptomatic or obviously anybody who tests positive for COVID-19 to stay home. Let me quote Dr. Hinshaw. She said that, quotes, we will not eliminate COVID, which means we need to learn how to live with it. Testing every person with a runny nose or sore throat is an extraordinary measure uh, that we cannot sustain, particularly through the respiratory virus season. Uh, legally mandating everyone to stay home for 10 days if they have any symptoms is also an extraordinary measure. It was necessary before vaccines, but it is also incredibly disruptive. Uh, it could only be justified when the risk was unchecked by vaccine protection. I know the vast majority of Albertans do not want to knowingly inflict harm on others. I believe that for those who test positive for COVID-19, 
Knowing that staying home is the way to protect others and is the right thing to do will be enough for them to take that action, unquote. Emily, do you have a follow-up question? I'm just wondering, based on that response, then, if you feel that Alberta has high enough vaccine uptake that should we see this in school? Should we see cases, you know, in schools that there's no requirement for positive cases to isolate? You're confident that we won't uh, contribute to a fourth wave? Well, we do expect cases to go up and to go down. Uh, Dr. Hinshaw has said, as have I, that we expected after lifting uh, public health restrictions that we would see an increase in cases, just as we've seen in other provinces and other jurisdictions around the world. And um, as we both, uh, Dr. Hinshaw and I both have said that we expect to see uh, an increase in cases in the fall based on seasonality, uh, but that will likely be uh, concurrent with an increase in uh, flu, flu and, and cold cases as well. But I am confident, we are confident, obviously, that the protective, a powerful protective effect of the vaccines uh, is a complete game changer. We now have uh, two thirds of Albertans fully vaccinated and over three quarters who have received uh, at least their first dose. Uh, this is, uh, these are levels that are almost unprecedented in the world. They're a little behind the, the Canadian average, but they're well, well ahead of the international averages. Uh, and in, in this respect, let me quote Dr. Uh, Sarah Fortune, who is the chair of the Department of Immunology and Infectious Diseases at Harvard University. She said last week that, quotes, Alberta is taking reasonable steps in the face of having done a good job of bringing the viral numbers down and in the face of good vaccine coverage. I don't think the people of Alberta, where you've achieved upwards of 70% of vaccine coverage, need to think that they're going to become the next Louisiana where vaccine coverage is much lower, unquote. With respect to schools and, and children, you ask a very important question there. Uh, and it's important to, to highlight that uh, the risks for children posed by COVID-19 are extremely low. They are lower than for the typical annual flu. Uh, as Dr. Hinshaw pointed out, uh, for kids, we saw more children uh, hospitalized in intensive care over the seven-month flu season of 2019-2020 than we have through the 17 months of COVID-19. Uh, she also points out that kids aged four to five to 14, pardon me, had a 140 times greater risk of an emergency department visit for a sports-related injury in 2019 than their risk of COVID-related hospital admission since March of 2020. So we don't talk about shutting down kids' sports because unfortunately some kids uh, uh, get injured and have to go to the emergency ward. A, a tiny fraction of that number end up having to visit a hospital with COVID-19. I think it's also important, there's been some, um, I think, let, let me just be charitable and say inaccurate information uh, that has uh, about the impact of COVID on, on kids. It's important to recall that in Alberta, over the 17 months uh, of the uh, disease here, uh, we have not recorded a single COVID-related death for any Albertan under the age of 20. Uh, and the, the vaccine coverage, uh, it just reduces the chances of children uh, becoming sick or experiencing severe symptoms radically from where we were six and 12 months ago. Peter, can you please put through our next caller? Next is Rick Bell with the Calgary Sun. Go ahead, Rick. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Premier. Um, just have a couple of questions. One is concerning comments that have been made over the weekend and um, uh, and in the latter part of last week when the mayor said he was freaked out, quote unquote, after the announcement by Dr. Hinshaw and other councillors, including somebody running for mayor, Councillor Jody Gondek, has made a certain you know a comment, probably even more so than. Uh, than the mayor, and even wanting to hold an emergency meeting to reinstate the city's mask mandate because of what happened. So uh, how do you react to all that? You answered Lydia's question about how you understood there was some anger, but what do you say to the mayor who is freaking out and a councillor or more than one councillor who is also expressing grave concern? Well, I think it's regrettable that we've seen uh, comments uh, attacking the 
expertise uh, of our brilliant Chief Medical Officer of Health. I do recall a time not that long ago when uh, the same mayor wore a T-shirt saying, what would Hinshaw do? Uh, well, what she would do is the policy of the government of Alberta. Uh, this was a, a package that came forward from the Chief Medical Officer of Health and her team based on uh, the evidence, uh, both here and around the world, of the changing nature of the uh, disease given widespread vaccine protection and a, a careful analysis of the uh, risks and benefits of extraordinary, un, uh, almost unprecedented uh, government intervention versus the diminishing risk posed by the virus given the powerful effect of the vaccines. So I guess I would say um, that uh, this is a, a government that uh, respects uh, the advice of our uh, scientific experts, uh, of, of our chief medical officer of health that is following that advice, knowing that that advice is based on hard data and science. And I would just encourage others in positions of authority. Uh, um, I can understand that from time to time there's going to be disagreements about uh, aspects of policy, but I would call on um, anybody in a position of authority, especially, especially elected leadership, uh, to show a degree of respect uh, for the Chief Medical Officer of Health and for the advice that she provides. Do you have a follow-up today, Rick? Yes. Um, I, I realize cities have their own jurisdiction with regards to some of this uh, COVID stuff, but there is uh, the request for more than one councillor to consider reinstating a mask mandate in Calgary. Um, I realize you're, you know, that they're allowed to do this, I gather, but what are your thoughts on the necessity for a mask mandate? Well, in fact, Again. sir, well, I'll tell you what the, the views of the chief medical officer are and as uh, endorsed by uh, the government, and, and that is to lift the uh, mask mandate for ride shares, transit, and taxis uh, uh, in mid-August, uh, when we reach to the, the next stage. Uh, that's the advice that we have received based on the widespread protection of the vaccines. And um, I would encourage uh, municipal councillors to uh, respect the expert uh, advice of the chief medical officer. I don't know how a, a city councillor uh, believes that they have a greater insight into the public health challenge than uh, the uh, Chief Medical Officer of Health and the Public Health Division of the Government of Alberta, who is responsible for this work. Um, so I, I think we should focus on the science and not allow this, these issues to be politicized. Um, the, uh, I would point out, Rick, that the same councillor is, is, is somebody who, who didn't want to lift the mask mandate in Calgary whatsoever. Uh, and um, uh, was uh, ultimately defeated. So I know that there are some people who, look, we, I respect if there are individuals who feel that in certain contexts um, it, it makes sense for them to wear masks, that's fine. I respect their choice. And we do call upon people certainly to mask themselves if they are in a high-risk context, like a continuing care facility or a hospital, obviously. Uh, but uh, the advice of, of our uh, public health experts is that uh, outside of those contexts, uh, masking is no longer a, a necessary, or, or rather, it's no longer a, a necessary public health intervention. Um, and look, the science is, is very clear. Uh, we have one of the highest levels of vaccination in the world. And let me just drill down on that a little bit, because it seems to get lost in all of the uh, political noise. Um, but the data out of the United States is remarkable. They have 163 million vaccinated uh, individuals, fully vaccinated, of whom 6,600 are in hospital. That's 0.004% of um, Americans who are fully vaccinated uh, are in hospital, and three quarters of them are very elderly. Um, and uh, in terms of people with, who, are, who get symptomatic infections in the United States out of the 163 million fully vaccinated people, 0.09% uh, uh, end up being symptomatic, and those are almost always minor symptoms. Um, now, 
we uh, have two thirds, and I believe we'll shortly, you know, within foreseeable future, we'll have three quarters of this population uh, fully vaccinated, um, meaning that effectively uh, COVID does not pose a risk for 99.999% of that population. It's time to follow the data, it's time to listen to the science. We have time for about one more question. So with that, operator, can you please put through our last caller? Final question is from Andrea Williams with CBC. Go ahead, please. Hi. Uh, yes, Andrea Williams with CBC. Uh, my question would be for uh, Premier Kenny in French, if that's possible, but then you could answer in English as well. Uh, hold on a second, please. <laughs> okay, so... Um, il y a des manifestations depuis cinq jours à Calgary et Edmonton à cause de la fin euh, annoncée de toutes les dernières mesures sanitaires. Qu'est-ce que vous répondez euh, à ces opposants? Euh, je respecte euh, les, les perspectives euh, des, des personnes, mais enfin, euh, comme premier ministre, il faut que je suive euh, le, le conseil de l'officier de santé de, euh, publique, euh, doc, le docteur Hinshaw, Uh, qui a proposé les, une, une, uh, uh, les nouvelles, uh, une nouvelle, nouvelle approche en ce qui concerne le COVID-19, uh, une approche qui a été acceptée par le Conseil des ministres et une approche qui est basée sur uh, les preuves, les données, uh, la science de uh, uh, cette maladie. Effectivement, c'est basé sur la protection remarquable des vaccins et comme je viens de dire, euh, 89,99% des gens qui sont vaccinés sont protégés effectivement de COVID-19 et nous approchons, nous avons plus de trois quarts de la population albertaine qui ont reçu un vaccin. Alors, c'est la raison pour laquelle le Dr. Hinshaw euh, a dit qu'il faut... Uh, il faut s'adresser aux autres menaces, aux santé publique et pas exclusivement uh, le virus de COVID-19. Uh, et uh, avec ce niveau de protection, uh, les, les interventions uh, sans précédent du gouvernement uh, intérieurement ne, ne sont plus uh, nécessaires. I have a follow-up question. In French as well. Um, vous n'avez pas peur que la fin des, uh, 40, de la quarantaine obligatoire et des autres mesures sanitaires ne crée un variant albertain, comme uh, le maire de Calgary l'a dit? Écoutez, uh, le, nous continuons d'exiger de, que les personnes avec les symptômes ou uh, qui ont un test positif pour COVID-19 restent chez eux. Uh, et c'est une, uh, une attente. Je crois que les gens sont responsables, uh, mais uh, ça a été une réglementation qui n'était pas vraiment renforcée. Uh, et uh, je viens de citer le Dr. Hinshaw à cet égard en anglais. So, just for folks who are wondering, I basically, everything I just said in French, I'd said earlier in English. So, I, I won't translate myself, it would just be redundant. All right. Well, thank you uh, for the folks here at the studio for hosting us and uh, for everybody here from the uh, industry. I, enter, I uh, look forward to getting out and seeing. I guess these are typically like very secret tapings, but I've been trying to negotiate a walk on cameo role on the, on the last of us, but uh, I'm not sure that would turn out because it's a zombie movie. But anyway, I can't wait to see the, this when it hits our screens. And thank you very much, everybody, for being here.